So we have 726 times 37. 7 times 3 is 21. This video will get back to multiplication in just a moment, but first, some basics. Counting rods were short, uh, wooden or bamboo, sometimes they were made out of jade or ivory. Initially, they were about six inches long, but then they were a little bit shorter in the end. Uh, ultimately, they were about three inches. These are half popsicle sticks I'm going to use uh, for the demonstration. They're about two inches long, so they're a little shorter. Uh, not quite the shape of an original counting rod, but the idea is you can represent numbers in, in the following way. One would just be one rod, and, and two could be represented with two rods side by side, and similarly three and four and five. Of course, just piling rods together, ultimately that's not going to be a very good system, so once you get up uh, past five, we start doing uh, something else. So for six, there's a horizontal rod which represents a group of five, and then a vertical rod which represents one more. And so then seven and eight and nine can be represented similarly by adding additional rods. So this would be nine and, and this would be seven. It was a base 10 system in that once we get up to nine we're going to use a second spot to represent the numbers. Now what they did was they represented a 10 with placing kind of one rod horizontally. Um, so for example 12 would be represented with a single rod in a horizontal position and then two rods representing the two more in a vertical position. They didn't have a symbol for zero but this system was used largely for computation, not for recording numbers uh, permanently, but just for you know, adding or multiplying uh, or doing other computations, uh, and in which case you would kind of know what the number represents as you're working on it. And, and so we would know that this represents 10 uh, and this represents 1, and so together they would represent 11. Uh, and we could kind of continue, you know, so 21 and 31 would look like this, and, and similarly 41 and 51, but then just like with you know, when we went from 5 to 6, when we go to fif from 51 to 61, I'm going to change the orientation, so this would now be 61, where the vertical bar, because it's in a horizontal orientation, the vertical bar represents 5, a group of 5, and the horizontal bar represents one more. So we could do 71 and 81 and 91 um, similarly. So if I wanted to represent 101, you know, again this is 91, um, I would have an empty spot. They didn't have a symbol for zero, but I would have an empty spot, a little bit of a gap, and so this would represent 100 and then one more. So to recap, let me just mention you, we can represent the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 uh, with vertical rods. And then when we get up to 6, we're going to use a horizontal rod to represent a group of 5, and then the vertical rod represents one more. And then in a similar way, we can represent 7, 8, and 9 with groups of 5, and then one more. So these are all one-digit numbers. If I want to represent two-digit numbers, then I'm going to introduce a horizontal position. So that would be the number 23. Um, where 2 is represented horizontally. So the horizontal representation uh, just kind of turns things on its side. And then what happens with 6 is that this now represents the group of 5, the vertical represents the group of 5, and the horizontal represents one more. And so we could do 7 in a horizontal uh, orientation, and 8 and 9 in horizontal orientations. So the horizontal orientations correspond to numbers that would be in like the tens place, the thousands place, the hundred thousandths place, and so on. So basically odd powers of ten. And the vertical orientations would correspond to numbers in the ones place, or the hundreds place, or the ten thousandths place. So even powers of ten. So if I wanted to represent a number like 7,674, I would represent... Uh, 7,000 with a uh, horizontal 7, and then 6 with a vertical 6, another 7 for 70, 
uh, 4 would be a vertical 4. I encourage you to take a moment if you have popsicle sticks or coffee stirrers or you could take strips of paper and create the following counting rod numbers 576, 8249, and 103. If you don't have materials to, to have actual you know, physical rods that you can move around, you could uh, just draw the symbols on paper with a pen. In just a moment, I'll show what they should look like. So 576, it's a three-digit number. So the middle number is going to be horizontal, the 7. It's going to be orient oriented horizontally. And the other two are vertical. So 5 is vertical, 7 is horizontal, and 6 is vertical. 8,000, so 8 is in the thousands place, so that's going to be a horizontal 8. 200 is a vertical 2. Horizontal 4. And then finally a vertical 9. And 103 would look like this. There's a little bit of a space in the tens place, so the one uh, for 100 is vertical, the three for the three in the ones place is vertical. There's nothing in the horizontal position, um, but by alternating you know, horizontal and vertical uh, positions, a, a calculator, someone using the counting rods, could tell the difference you know, pretty easily between 103, where there's supposed to be a zero in between, and say, you know, 13 would have the one in the in the horizontal orientation. Um, so it makes it, you know, a little bit easy to you know, tell the difference between 103 and 13 and 130 would look like this. Um, and in particular, it, it makes, you know, 13, if we didn't change the orientation, 13 could look a whole lot like 4, um, and so it could cause some, some trouble. Let's take a look at a multiplication problem for counting rods. We would line up uh, the two numbers that I want to multiply. So this is 726 times 37. We line up the two numbers with a little bit of a space in between. That's actually where our answer is going to go. And the lower number, the ones place of the lower number, is under the highest place of the upper number. So we start by taking you know, the first upper number, the highest digit of the upper and lower. We kind of actually work uh, left to right. 7 times 3 is 21. So we say this upper 7 calls the lower 3. And I want to line that up with the 3. So the 21 gets placed, you know, symbols for 2 and 1 get, get placed above the 3. Now I arrange these because I know that th this is actually 700 times 30. So that's going to end up meaning 21,000, right? Our answer, I can kind of think about this ahead of time, our answer is going to be a five-digit number. So I know that this is the fifth position, so it gets a vertical orientation, and the one gets a horizontal orientation. So 7 times 3 is 21, and that gets placed above the 3, so that the 1 of 21 is in line above the 3. 7 times 7 is 49, so I'm going to add 49, so I can add 4 more to the 1, so I can easily just turn that into a 5. And then 9, in a vertical orientation, would be uh, 1 for a group of 5, and then 4 more. So now I'm done with the 7 up top, so I'm going to move that out of the way, and shift the 37 over so that I'm now going to multiply the 2 with the 3 and the 7. So 2 times 3 is 6. I want to add 6 more above the 3, but that's a 9. So that's going to become 5. And then I get one more over here, but that's already a 5. So to get a 6, I'm going to create a horizontal, horizontally oriented 6 uh, that looks like that. So now I have essentially 26,500. So that was the 2 times the 3, added 5 more to that, sorry, added 6 more to that 9, and gave me 15. The 2 times the 7 is 14, so 2 times 7 is 14, so I'm going to add one more here, 
So that becomes a vertically or organized 6, and then 14 is going to put 4 into the uh, tens place. We're done with the 2, so I can move that out of the way and shift the 37. So now I'm going to take the upper 6, multiply with the lower 3. The upper 6 calls the lower 3. 6 times 3 is 18. And I want to add 18 above the 3, in line with the 3. So I'm going to add 8 to the 4 and 1 to the 6. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. So that becomes just a 2. And then I want to take one more and add it here, but then I was adding 18, so I, I get another one that I add there. So one comes from the tens place of the 18, and then another one, you're know, carrying the one, comes from taking four plus eight, that leaves two behind, and gives me one ten in the next place over. And then finally, six times seven is 42, so I'm gonna get four here, well that turns it into a six, and then two. So what makes this kind of a convenient way of calculating is that you know we can quickly change things. Like a two can easily become a six, um, and so I don't need to like add four more. I can just maybe work with the rods that are there uh, to rearrange them. And so our final answer is twenty six thousand eight hundred and sixty two. I'd like to take a quick second look at our calculation 726 times 37 to try to demonstrate that this can be a fairly efficient process. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 7 is 49. 7. 2 times 3 is 6. Added to the 9 is 15. 2 times 7 is 14. So this becomes a 6. 6 times 7 is 42. And so we see the same answer that we saw a moment ago, 26,862. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.